Hi, and welcome to Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse Skinner, and today I want to show you six ways that GitHub Copilot has made me more productive. So the first way is that GitHub Copilot can finish your patterns for you. So let's say you want to have an array of months. You can set that up like this, and immediately it fills it in. Well, here it has the full month name. So maybe you want to have some other pattern like Jan dot. And there you go. Automatically, it'll finish the pattern for you. So for another example of this, let's say you're trying to return an object here. Uh, you might have age, something like model.getAge. Uh, when you have another example, like already it's showing me name, uh, maybe we have address. And as long as your pattern is predictable, uh, GitHub Copilot is going to suggest probably the right thing for you. So the second way Copilot has helped me out is it basically finishes my sentences for me. Let's say I want some active items here. So I have items, let's say I'm doing filter, uh, and I just pause and it already has, it already has a pretty good guess, item, item active. So let's say maybe item.active is not the way I need to determine if an item is active. So I will do part of this, and then maybe I have status, and maybe status equals active is actually correct. So I just uh, keep typing until, Copilot predicts the right thing, and that usually happens before the end of a line. The third way Copilot helps me is by naming things. Naming things is a very hard part of programming, but Copilot definitely makes it easier. So in this example already, Copilot has named my variable item for me based on items, which is absolutely correct. But it can even do way more than that. So let's say I'm making an async function here, add book with some params. I won't even tell Copilot what those params are. And already it's suggesting that I have title, author, ISBN. Let's say I do a wait on query here, and already it's suggesting a whole table in SQL for me with a table named books, author, ISBN, description, image, price, quantity. This may or may not be what I want, but a lot of the time Copilot will make a suggestion and make me think of things I hadn't even thought of. Maybe I was going to make a books table, but didn't think, oh yeah, maybe I should have an image. Maybe I should have price in there as well. So there's been more than one time when Copilot actually suggested a better name for me than I was intending to use, and I ended up going with that. I figure Copilot is pulling from hundreds of thousands of lines of code written by other people, and probably the names that those people have picked make more sense than what I'm going to come up with most of the time. Now, you do have to be very careful here because you may notice that Copilot has created a security vulnerability here, so you shouldn't just insert your values into the database this way you need to escape them first so you need to be very careful about copilot suggestions they aren't always secure and you can't trust it 100 uh, percent so you do still need to be uh, the, the pilot here copilot is not the pilot you are the pilot and you need to be careful that you're not going to do something super dangerous with your airplane the fourth way copilot helps me out is that i don't need to go to stack overflow that much anymore uh, if I want to figure out how to do something, let's say you want to pick a random number between a min and a max, you can just type a function name like get random number, and you give it a min and a max, and then you let Copilot tell you what that line of code looks like. Now you do need to be a little bit careful because you don't actually know if this code works. So you still have to try it out, you still have to test it and see, make sure it does what you think it should. Uh, but it definitely saves you from those sort of tricky things where you're not really sure how to do something. Maybe you don't have to search on the web. You can just let Copilot uh, do the searching for you. The fifth way Copilot helps me out is by knowing what I'm intending to do, especially if I define a variable. It knows what I want to do with that variable. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm going to process some items here. I take in some items. Uh, I want to have a variable called active items, sort of like what we did earlier. Uh, so it already knows I'm probably going to do a loop, and it already suggests that if one of the items is active, it's going to increment active items. Because I had this variable active items defined up here, it's going to make a suggestion that you probably are going to do something like use that variable in some way. Um, so this is actually really helpful. Sometimes Copilot reminds me that I have a variable I haven't used and suggests that I use it before I remember that I actually meant to use it. Even if the suggestion is wrong, I actually appreciate that reminder. So the last way Copilot helps me out, which I recently discovered and actually blew my mind because I had no idea it was possible, is that if you use test-driven development where you write the tests first and then write your code, Copilot will actually suggest code that makes the test pass. And I didn't even know this was possible. Let me show you an example. 
So let's say you're writing a test here. I'm going to import model.js. This file doesn't even exist yet. I'm going to import uh, deep equal from assert from the node assert. Did you see it already suggested from assert? It just knew that that's what I would probably do. So let's say I have a test here. It should return an empty array by default. And then I'll just show you an example where I create the model. It's actually already suggesting the test I wanted to write anyway. So that's nice. And then let's say I do another one. Um, it should uh, add double the number to the list. Uh, this is not code I would probably normally write, but I just want to give an example here. So let's say, um, yeah, I want to create the model. Uh, but what I want to show is that if I add, um, let's say, 7, then it should deep equal. This is actually what I wanted to do. I want it to, so it'll have 14. If I add 7, 14 is going to be in the list. So I'm going to save this as model.test in a blank folder here. And then I'm going to make a new file, um, model.js. And just by making that file, I can now uh, write some code. So let's say I do export default space. It's already suggesting class model. And boom, it does all the rest of it, even the part where I'm doubling the number before adding it to a list. Isn't that mind boggling? It actually looks into the other code that's using that file and figures out what you've been doing and what it expects. So totally changes test driven development where you can write your tests. And for the most part, Copilot will help you write code that passes the tests immediately. Isn't that amazing? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you get a chance to try out Copilot for yourself. Check out copilot.github.com. And thanks for watching. Thank you.